Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Helen Noble, celebrant of Surrey and founder of Swan Song, and I am here weekly to give you tips, tricks and information on all things ceremony, be that from weddings to funerals to namings and everything in between. This week I'm talking timings. What time should you start your ceremony? So I've got a bit of a list because there's quite a lot of factors you may want to take into consideration. Um, you don't need to, but you may have already found out that you're never going to please everybody and everybody's got an opinion. So if you have consciously thought about it and looked at it from all angles, as and when helpful Sue says, oh, blah, 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 blah then you can say yeah no I thought about that but actually yada 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 and then you can feel really smug <laughs> so you know it's always about being prepared because you're never going to keep everyone happy but if you're anything like me you fret because you want to keep everybody happy even though it's your day your way and you want to do it that way blah, 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 blah. there will always be someone that you genuinely care about that will have an opinion and if you feel like you think they think you haven't thought about it. It just gives you that horrible dread feeling. Um, so here are some things to think about to avoid that feeling. So I've got quite a list, so I'm gonna keep looking that way. <laughs> so firstly, for the ceremony, think about your wedding as a whole day. Yes, the ceremony is actually the heart of the day, otherwise it's just a big party. Um, so mostly people want to kick off their day with the ceremony. That might include pre-ceremony drinks. I love pre-ceremony drinks. It makes a really good vibe. It really is a good thing to do if you have friends that are usually late for everything, um, or if you're somewhere where you're worried about um, traffic or roadworks, or trying to find it because it's in a field down a lane, but sat nav always takes you to the other lane. Um, give yourself what I call wriggle time. So you would put, say the ceremony, say you've gone for two o'clock. I will explain why you might go for two o'clock in a minute. But say you go for two o'clock, you might want to put on the invitation, doors open at 1.15 or doors open at one o'clock for a 2 p.m. ceremony. Now, the reason I say split it is because there is a cultural difference. In the UK, the wedding invites, usually whatever time you put on the invite is the time of the ceremony in america it tends to be the time the doors open so if you have a lot of international people if you put come to the wedding of so and so and so and so at two o'clock they might think that is pre-ceremony drinks and they'll rock up at 2 20 and have missed half the ceremony so if you are going to do pre-ceremony drinks do put Doors open at 1.15 for a two o'clock ceremony so that everybody knows they've got that wriggle time if they need it to change the nappy or park the car or get lost or be late. Um, but they will know that the two o'clock is non-negotiable but the 1.15 is. So on your invites, if you're going to do pre-ceremony drinks or if you know you've got people that are a little bit not so hot on timekeeping, I would say doors open at blah blah ceremony at blah blah so first of all do that so as a whole you think we're gonna we're really energetic people we want the wedding to last a full 12 hours we are bundles of joy we have loads of young friends um tiredness isn't a problem so therefore you might want to have a noon ceremony because then your wedding day can be like full on 12 hours. So like noon till 12.40, 12.45, and then you've got the rest of the day and all the shenanigans and dinners and speeches and all that can sort of be done by six. And then you can have like full on night out. Or if you've got oldies, for example, or you've got loads of mates with kids and you're thinking kids or no kids. <laughs> 
Um, so you just kind of need to think about the whole day holistically with who you have coming and what they come with. So again, it's that, yes, it's your day, but actually if your guests are gonna be grumpy and tired and stressed, that energy will affect you. So you, you do need to think about your guests a bit. Um, so say, for example, if you've got lots of oldies coming and actually it's really important to you that Granny's there, um, she will want to stay for the speeches and probably a little bit of the first dance, but she doesn't need to be there at half nine and she's probably not interested in being there at half nine. So, and they always wake up at like five in the morning. <laughs> so it might be that the other end of the spectrum, lots of little ones or oldies, that you think actually, no, we're going to go for noon because then all the shenanigans are done by 6.30 and the first dance and they can be gone by eight and that is plenty. That will still work with a one or a two. Um, so if you push it later, it means you've got more time in the morning. So those early ones, like say noon, are really good for localised and little or accessible because whatever the season, whatever, wherever you are in the world, mainly wherever you are in the world, at noon, you will have light. It might be high noon in the middle of summer. It might be, it's a winter wedding <clears throat> and the dark, you know, people aren't driving to you in the dark because you're not having a wedding at half nine in the morning. Um, but they're not necessarily going home in the dark because if they're not staying for the evening, do you know what I mean? You're just kind of thinking, when is our daylight? And also from a photography point of view, if you want to catch that golden hour, when will that be? Because in the summer, it's going to be mm, 10 to 10. And in the winter, it's going to be 10 to 4. <laughs> so have a think about your light. I know I've jumped quite a lot here. So let's backtrack. Think about your age of everyone that's coming and how they will fare as an energy throughout the day. It might be you go for an earlier ceremony because you want to keep the energy up for as long as possible and not have everyone flake off by half six. So you might want to keep the energy up. It might be you've got internationals, there's people traveling in or they're driving up and you want to give them time to be able to get there, but they're not going to be staying over because you haven't got a venue that's got rooms or you're not going to do a hotel or you haven't, you're not thinking that your wedding is like a full on weekend. It's just like full on big fat day. Thank you very much for coming goodbye. Um, in which case a later one will be better because they've got time to commute, to get ready, to drive up, to park, to get lost, all that jazz. And you have got time to just hang out a bit in the morning. Um, so then a two o'clock one's quite good because it means you've eaten, you're not over hungry, um, you digested all your food, you've had time to be calm, nothing's been rushed, and the hobnobbing part of the day can get condensed a little bit because you're like, oh, I don't, do you know what I mean? We're not, we don't need to do that. We're not massive pickers. We like meals. So it might be you go for two o'clock, everyone's out for bubbly, but not canapes. And then you go straight into your dinner at four or half four. And um, because everyone would have had lunch, then so no one's going to be hungry. And that kind of depends on your budget. Do you want to feed people three times with canapes and dinner? And then later again, um, for like you know evening bacon butties type of thing or um pizza fans or whatever um so again the ceremony de depends on your guests in a way because what experience do you want your guests to have how much do you want to host do you want to host them for a full 12 hours and three meals it can kind of make kind of pays being a meal if you know what i mean um or are you thinking do you know what Let's push it even further. Let's have a half past three wedding. So you definitely don't need to do lunch. You don't really need to do canapes because everyone's going to be hungry and want to go straight into dinner. So you finish your ceremony, you do your confetti and, and have bubbly for, I don't know, 80 minutes maybe. And then you go straight in. Um, so you need to think about your whole day and your budget to think what time will that ceremony work with what we can afford what we choose to do and how we keep our guests happy and energized and not blind drunk by 4.15. <laughs> so have a think about those three and bearing in mind with the guests, 
if they're international, jet lag, commuting, hotel rooms. The other thing with hotel rooms is what time is check in and what time is check out. If they can't check in till after two and you're having your ceremony at one, they might fret and be like, I've got all my stuff and I don't want to travel wedding ready. I want to just get there and then get ready. So it might be you negotiate with the hotel saying, you know, getting not getting in until two is ridiculous because we please get in by 12. And then they've got an hour and a bit, you know, an hour to get ready and play. Um, so also have a look at your hotel check-in times that are the guests that you're still that you're having that you know are staying over so that's your guests and all the logistics that might go with that including energy and budget and food about you what is your best time of day are you an early riser can you be like up and adam at the crack of dawn so your makeup person comes in at say eight uh, when i was bridesmaid the makeup person came at half six and i was like whoa good morning Huh? I wasn't expecting it to be that early, but we were like totally ready by half 11, actually before that by 11, um, because the ceremony was at noon, because the bride was an early riser and she she's like, I'm in bed by 10, I'm done. So she knew she didn't want a, a really late wedding. Um, so the, the ceremony was early because that's what worked for the bride and groom. They were early risers. Um, they were not night owls and they were totally flagging by the end of the day. But, you know, on a wedding, your energy carries you through, as does champagne. <laughs> so I don't actually know what time they went in the end. Um, but have a think about what works for you. Do you feel that actually by four o'clock you're really flagging and you're ready for your second wind? In which case, have your meal at four o'clock because you've got time to sit down and go, whew, which means working backwards and you've got 90 minutes for hobnobbing and canapes and champagne takes you to 2.30. So say if you want a ceremony, that is about half an hour, maybe one one thirty. So you've got like toilet time and everyone going out to have a cigarette or breastfeed or do their lipstick. Um, in which case, if you know four o'clock's your slump, then maybe go for a one thirty wedding or a two o'clock wedding. Because that's what works with your rhythm. And at the end of the day, you want to be on your top tip-tastic form to enjoy every moment. And if you know either you're diabetic and you're going to need to manage your sugars, um, or you're just one of those people that, like me, you get to four o'clock and you're like, oh, okay, I need to reset for the next eight hours, um, then have a think about that. And we can work around that. Um, sleep, I put. If you um, are not a very good sleeper, and you're going to have a disturbed up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Then how does that affect your day? Are you, do you know that actually by two o'clock you're, you're as good as you're going to get, you're at the top of your game, in which case definitely two o'clock. Um, does it mean that you're just going to spend the whole morning completely fretting, pulling out your hair and biting your nails, in which case 12 o'clock, let's get the ceremony done and the energy up and you feeling in a safe place. And then the rest of the day you can just literally kick off your heels and have a nice time. Um, or, or do you need a nap? I had one bride that was like, I am going to flag and I am going to disappear. We we're like, okay. Um, so we did, I think we did a 1.30 ceremony and she literally was like, I'm, I'm gonna disappear off now. She had ME, so she needs to just have a lie down. And she disappeared off about half past three whilst everyone was doing their seating plan and working out where they're going and yada, yada, yada. She was like, I just need to be off radar for half an hour. And she went and had a lie down. 3.30 to 4 and then we announced her in at 4 o'clock and she was like, ah, oh, back in the room, here we go. Um, so work out what you need physically, mentally and emotionally and we'll work the day around that. Um, what else have I put? Nerves, I mentioned that, working on that. Night before, mentioned that if you're having um, a rehearsal dinner as well, don't get too drunk, make sure you've got a lie in. The worst thing for your skin on a wedding day is alcohol because you'll be a little puffy. So try not to drink too much the night before, if any. Makeup artists out there will know. They're like, oh, your skin's all swollen. Um, so just keep your water up. Keep your water up. Um, other thing about timings, talk going back to guests, was little ones. If you are having a wedding party with lots of little ones and flower girls and nieces and nephews and half-sisters or 
your cousin's little, you know, whatever, um, those little ones are not going to be on their best game at two o'clock because that's when they either are ready for a snack or ready for a sleep. So you might want to have a half one so they can get the ceremony done and then collapse. Or they've had their lunch at 12, they're full of beans, but not full of sugar. It's weaned off half one, one o'clock. If you've got your little ones, that is the time that genuinely works having been doing this for 11 years because otherwise they fall off at two o'clock and they become really impossible or at 12 it's too early to have fed them and they've just eaten and then they're off their face on sugar because they haven't digested it so little ones at 12 o'clock no little ones one half past one yes uh light i've mentioned when you're going for your photos when do you want it to be light again it depends on the season keep an eye on the season, literally, is it dark? Are people coming or going in the dark? Normally people don't mind. If they do mind driving at night, they know that and they work their life around that and you're not responsible. But it just means, like I said at the very beginning, if someone has their tuppence to put in, you can say, I did think about that. And actually, yada, 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 yada. And they're like, oh yeah, fine. Because at the end of the day, people just want to feel seen and heard. And that is my absolute biggest hindsight tip for you that people that put their tuppence in actually just want to be seen and heard and if you have spent all of five minutes or even half an hour or dinner talking about timing of how and why you want the wedding ceremony to be when you choose the wedding ceremony to be when people make their comments you can say I did think about that and this 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 and they go oh okay thank you because they just, just want to feel seen and heard. Um, what else have I put? Light, dark, seasons, little ones, hungry, hungry. I have mentioned it a few times, but just going to who you are as a person, if you are a hangry person, or if, um, say, you've got IBS and you know you're going to swell up, but you want to eat something, you know, you have to actually just take a moment to be what does my body do well what does it not do well how can i support it in doing what it does well to its optimum best day ever um and work around that so think about what you're going to eat when you're going to eat it and then move your timings with that it's, it's, most people just go oh let's have a ceremony at 1 30. but it's good to know why why have you picked it i would say if you were going to pick any time between one and two works. One, one fifteen, one thirty, one forty five, two o'clock, two fifteen, two thirty, I'll push. Um I have done ceremonies at half eleven, I have done ceremonies at half seven. Um because of all those reasons, either they were ill or they had some medical needs or they wanted to get married um in the dark, but they wanted incoming to be twilighty and dusky and sunsetty, so it was all ambient when people were coming in um, and I've had other couples want that kind of twilight ambiance after the ceremony so have a think about the light and the mood and the energy so loads to think about I realize I've done that in a kind of scattergun kind of way um, so apologies that's just my brain um, but it's basically to make sure that you've protected yourself against Aunt Joan, who's got something to say, that you can categorically say, I thought about that, thank you so much, and I've done this for a reason. And it just protects you, because the last thing you wanna feel is that you've done something wrong, you've upset somebody that you have invited because you want them to come to your wedding. Everyone you're inviting, you want them to come to your wedding, so you don't want them to have a bad word to say about it. And it's that trying to keep everyone happy that's really hard. So as long as you have considered the reasons, when they put their toppings in, you can say, I understand, you're seen, you're heard, and I've done this for this reason. Then they're back on your team again. And it's just, with hindsight, it's just a useful thing to do, to be mindful and kind, thinking about everyone to a point, but therefore making an informed decision to what works best for you and your other half on your wedding day but understanding that everyone coming you have invited because you want them to be there so it's a balance and it's hard work but i'm here for the support i'm here for you to pick my brains and um, dm me if 
find me on my website, helen-noble.co.uk, on Instagram, on Pinterest, at Celebrant of Surrey, or on WhatsApp. I'm here. Hope that was helpful. Lots of love. Talk to you soon. Bye.